Look, we are not nitwits. We are all fairly reasonable people. And it wasn't one person driving a diktat. We followed a process over a large period of time. The issue is not about cutoffs. You, I'm sure, recognize this very well. We have a limited number of seats which have been limited for a long time because that's all we can handle, about 55 to 60,000. Oh, yeah, I've read the essay. It's an entertaining essay, but you know, there isn't much scholarship in this. And I say this with a great deal of thought. Why do you think it was rolled back? Oh, that's a very good question. I honestly don't know. I cannot find... If you followed the debates, the discussions, have you come across a single academic argument which says this is a faulty system? At least I could not. And at one time I went to this TV channel where some of our most vociferous and you know, opponents, critics were present there at this town hall meeting. And I was grilled for more than one hour. But I couldn't come across a single academic argument. So then in that case, do you think there were, if there are no academic reasons for rolling it back, were there any procedural lapses? That was on one of the grounds on which you were served a show cause notice by, by the president. I can tell you with complete assurance that there's not a single procedural lapse. Look, we are not nitwits. We are all fairly reasonable people and it wasn't one person driving a diktat. We followed a process over a large period of time. And I can assure you that there is not a single lapse. That is the way I answered in the show called notice also. The HRD minister in several of her interviews has said that this program did not have the approval of the visitor, which in effect would mean that so many thousands of students would graduate with illegal degrees and um, illegal degrees is, is, is a term. I honestly do not know what exactly uh, she has said. Look, these are media reports and maybe you should meet and ask in person. No, but as I inferred, as I inferred, uh, I could be wrong, but my inference was that the ordinances, you see, when you create a new program of study, you create ordinances. That is a prescribed statutory provision. And there is a clear-cut court ruling so that I, I cite that ruling so that there should be no ambiguity on understanding this. This court ruling came in the context of the semester system where a segment of teachers took the university to court during my time that the semester was illegal because the ordinances did not have approval of the president. And a division bench of the high court gave a very clear-cut ruling that an ordinance comes into force the moment the executive council approves it. It is in force. And it is communicated to the president not for approval, for his information. The president has the right and the privilege to disapprove. But there is no question of approval. It is in force the moment the executive council. That ruling is clear cut and it came during the time when we were pushing ahead with the semester system. One of the moves that are shocking things for us every year are the cut off marks for DU entrance, which are now touching 100%. What is the value of such cut off marks? And do you think there is any other, I mean, should there be entrance exams as a better option? You know, no matter which way you try this, it's going to torture the student. You try an entrance exam, it's one more exam for the student. It's just not going to be easy. The issue is not about cutoffs. You, I'm sure, recognize this very well. We have a limited number of seats which have been limited for a long time because that's all we can handle, about 55 to 60,000. And that's the number we can handle. But do you know the number of applicants, particularly after I introduced the, uh, the four-year program, it shot up exponentially. You know, the number of applicants just went up phenomenally. And you have just the exact same number of seats. So what do you do? You have to devise supposedly a fair and transparent system. If you ask me, that's not the way. And you know, I don't want to judge students on the basis of one exam that disables them. That was one of the merits of the four-year program. 
you could get into philosophy honors. Everybody was into an honor system, but you didn't have to take an honors degree. You could get out at two years, three years or four years. But while you're pursuing philosophy, you had the freedom to do chemistry as a minor. And that minor was strong enough to get you into the master's program. Only if you wanted, there was no compulsion. You could split your credits for the minor into other disciplines. There was no compulsion. So there was a greater chance for a student who hadn't managed to get a major of his choice to get a minor and a strong enough minor to do a master's in it. That was one of the big advantages of that system. It was uh, during your tenure that the Academic Council decided to do away with the 300 Ramayana essay by A.K. Ramanujan. Uh, what, is, what is your personal view on that decision? Let me tell you something. We were directed by the Supreme Court to place it before the Academic Council. It wasn't my decision. The Supreme Court told us to take it to the Academic Council. And we took it to the Academic Council and they deliberated for eight, nine hours on the matter. And then by an overwhelming vote, they just approved it. I just chaired the meeting and it wasn't a rush, rush affair. It was an enormous deliberation. So it isn't that it was my decision or my whim or fancy, not at all, no. I am asking what is your opinion of the essay? If you are asking me, have I read the essay? Is that what you want to know? Yeah, I have read the essay. It's an entertaining essay, but you know, there isn't much scholarship in this. And I say this with a great deal of thought. Take my word for it. There isn't much scholarship. I have checked many parts of the essay and I don't find, look, I don't think, he was a great scholar, but he didn't write this in any great scholarship, uh, pro, you know, effort. Not at all. No. Also, sir, what do you think of the Stevens controversy? Did you at any point intervene in speaking? <coughs> no, I cannot. See, uh, one of my predecessors told me, that the University of Delhi is very much like the government of India, you know, like the way in India is run. So we have colleges, they're more or less like our states, they're autonomous, they have their own governing body and they're governed through the governing body. A vice chancellor or the university has very limited, uh, you know, powers, very limited. If they decide to terminate someone, then they cannot do that without our approval. But we cannot take disciplinary action against someone there. It has to be first their prerogative and, and for other reasons. So I cannot immediately intervene in any college. It's, it's the governing body that works. Of course, we can try and advise them. We can try and, you know, reason with them. But beyond that, we don't have too much power. No. Did you do that? Did you reason with them? Or which issue are you referring to? I, I stayed away from most colleges because they must govern through their governing bodies. But yes, on occasion, we have reasoned with every college. And, uh, if you're asking over a sustained period of time, did I reason with St. Stephen's College? Well, university tried, but the Supreme Court gave a ruling. See, we tried to reason with them on the issue of appointing a principal. The university must be allowed to have a say. And they, they would not agree with us. And the matter went to the Supreme Court where a bench said that they have the right to do what they like. So you realize that their interpretation was different from ours, but you have to respect the Supreme Court.